let's go to Trier, Germany, known as Augusta Treuerorum by the Romans. Obviously, this first picture is not of me in Germany. It's in Spain, but I wanted to establish some creds with you guys. I've been teaching Latin for 18 years now, been studying it since the late 1980s. And of course, obviously, if you're studying Latin, you're studying the Romans, and you could say it's a special interest of mine. First things first, when you get to Trier, is you've got to park your car, because I went with my dad and we drove, instead of taking the train, because driving took two hours and the train took five, and to make a day trip of it, we drove. And as you can see, it's a modern city with street signs that have been dinged up. It almost looks like they're from Wyoming with the amount of looks like buckshot in them. And then after that, we went to the Hauptmacht and had ourselves some lunch. We had donor kebab, which at this point in time really is authentic German food. As you can see, it's this nice renaissance looking car-free, well, mostly car-free plaza very pleasant and in the background you can see the porta nigra which i am super happy to be at this is, i don't even know what to say anyway the porta nigra is probably the most outstanding piece of roman architecture left in trier and Trier was a really important Roman town thanks to the uh, Four Stooges. Uh, my daughter is there with them. But wait, Four Stooges. No, 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 no. Tetrarchs. Tetrarchs. That's right. Diocletian reformed the Roman Empire to have not one, not two, not three, but four emperors, two senior emperors known as the Augusti and two junior emperors known as the Caesares. And one of them set up their capital in Trier, Germany. And, oh, wait, who's this jagoff? Karl Marx. He's not one of the four tetrarchs. Get out of here. Anyway, back to Porta Nigra. It's a really cool structure, and it was one of the four gates in the wall surrounding the ancient city. And as you can see, it's a pretty big structure. It's three stories tall with a little tower that's up on a fourth story. And Trier had, by about the 3rd or 4th century AD, reached 75 to 100,000 people, a population it wouldn't see again till about the early part of the 20th century give or take, depending on the exact population of Roman Trier. Anyway, the cool thing about the Porta Nigra is that they will let you inside of it for the princely sum of four euros, and you get to just wander around. And as you can see, it's incredibly well-preserved with all sorts of arches, and the stone fittings are just incredibly tight here. Well, most Roman ruins you think of, they aren't like complete buildings or anything. And if you look out on that plaza from the Porta Nigra, you can kind of get a hint as to how this building survived. And the answer is get turned into a church, which the Porta Nigra definitely was. So that little plaza, I forget exactly what it was, some sort of cloister for the priests and nuns running the church that was in the Porta Nigra. That helped keep it in such a fine state of preservation. Well, inside of the Porta Nigra, the Germans have a fascination with scale maps that are 3D, which is really great. Um, and I've labeled up a few things on here. So the Hauptmacht, where I have lunch, is indicated with the red dot, more or less. And the Porta Nigra is straight down from there, which is where the map is. So, yo, dog, I heard you like maps. So here's Trier inside of Trier. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, the next thing I'm going to show you is the Roman Bridge. I think the Germans call it Roma Brucke or something like that. 
And then marked in blue is the Barbara Baths. Anyway, the bridge going over the Moselle is partially modern and partially Roman. Um, the reddish part you see on top is modern. I want to say that was put in in the early 20th century, but the foundations below, they're kind of the blackish stone bits. Those date back to the 2nd century AD, which is the 100s. I believe it is the oldest Roman bridge still carrying traffic north of the Alps. It's kind of tricky to call this a Roman bridge, but, you know, the foundations and piers definitely are Roman. Nice little walk across. There's not a whole lot to see on the other side. But on the Trier side, if you turn around and start coming back, you wind up at the Barbara Baths. Not entirely sure what this would have been called in Latin. Probably um, Termae Barbarae or Termae Barbararum, something like that. I couldn't find a good source for it. Anyway, they're incredibly ruined. It's surrounded by a residential neighborhood, and they've got some raised walkways, and you can walk around, but you have to apply some very serious imagination to it. The baths themselves, if you only read popular accounts, you might think that they're kind of a debauched center where all sorts of orgies and stuff happen, but in reality, it was more of kind of like a fitness center and swimming pool and maybe a library. You could definitely work out there. You could definitely get yourself clean, cleaned up. And, you know, you'd probably meet up and make some business connections there. Some Roman baths also featured libraries, so you could take care of your mind while you took care of your body. Anyway, most of it's in ruins and very definitely not the sort of thing where you go and say, wow, this is really spectacular. You have to apply a lot of imagination here. Even so, worth the price of entry, which is zero. The next thing I want to show you is the Aula Palatina, which, like the Porta Nigra, is a Roman building. I want to say this one was built around the year 400, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. And it's really impressive. I didn't go inside. Um, I don't know why. Probably because I couldn't figure out how to get in. And I was too lazy to really get to it. But it's a very impressive building. It's quite large. It's quite imposing. And as you can see, it's made of brick. But certainly in Roman times, that would have been covered over with stucco. Absolutely one of the coolest places. Has a nice little plaza in front of it. Get yourself a beverage and maybe a cold ice cream at the snack shop nearby. Um, it's It was built as a Christian building, so it was a church. It still is a church. Very well preserved. And maybe like and subscribe, drop a comment or not. I don't know that I care. And the last thing, it's not Roman, but it definitely has some Latin written on it. Nescitis qua hora. Dominus Veniat, if I can remember that right. It's awfully small. Um, it's at, let's see if I can say the German right here. It's at the Liebfrauenkirche. Um, you don't know when the Lord is going to return, and that's all I've got for you.